36. Watchman Broadcasting, transforming lives worldwide. The following program is made possible by the faithful support of the partners of WBPI TV 49. Your financial gifts will enable us to continue bringing this program to you. From the studios of Watchman Broadcasting on the banks of the Savannah River, it's Club 36 with Dorothy and Russell Spaulding. Tonight, uplifting ministry, testimonies, and live music, sharing the gospel to the CSRA and beyond. And now, your host for Club 36, Dorothy and Russell Spaulding. Welcome to Club 36. I know you get disappointed when Russell's not here, but you know what? He's been working in that building really hard, and he gets so hot and sweaty, and it just wears him out. And I think that happens to Dan and, uh, you know, all the other ones, Dr. Lee, and all the guys that are over there working every day. And so we just have to let him rest at night time but he'll be back here that's right he'll be back he needs to rest and recuperate because he's got a lot of more work to well, do tomorrow i know <laughs> every day i said russ aren't you gonna be out tonight oh i'm so tired i just that gotta heat will that take heat. it out of mm -hmm. you so pray for cold weather so then they can go <laughs> there and work some more and, and then come back here at night come here at night and be on tv well what are we talking about tonight we are talking about faith Faith, 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 faith. Well, here's some good scriptures. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. That's right. The substance of things hoped for. Of things hoped for. Substance means the choice most principal thing. So it is the ch the choice most principal, principal, most important thing of anything you hope for is your faith. That's right. Right. And if you want to bring something from the supernatural to the natural, it comes only by faith. By faith. That's right. You have to start speaking it speaking and calling it, it in. Uh, there's another verse here that says, um, and without faith, it's impossible to please God. Now, That's where right. does faith come from? From hearing the Word of God. Mm -hmm. That's right. Hearing and hearing and hearing the Word of God. That's right. And so one of the things you can do in your prayer time in the morning or in your Bible time is sit and read the Word every day. But when you do it, do it out loud because that's where your faith, your, your mind hears it, your body hears it, your ears hear it. And then it becomes stronger. Now I can read something. I can just read it. But if I read it out loud, wow. I got it. Plus, is that speaking? Is that speaking something out of your mouth? Let there uh -huh. be, and there was. So there's that speaking of faith, too. Speaking the word and coming into. There's power in the agreement of, of the, the word. word. And so if you speak it, that's stating that you are in agreement with that. With and so, what the word says. Right, and that, like you said, it gives you better because you hear it. So it builds your faith better than just mm -hmm. speaking. You, or I just mean, just reading. reading. I mean, you speak it, you declared, you decreed uh -huh. it. The devil's like, uh-oh, she's reading that again. Yeah, and he hates it. He hates that. This is the sword of the spirit. That's right. He hates it. He hates it. Slicing them up a little bit. I was trying. Keep <laughs> right, talking. John, I'm trying to find John something is too. a John's a fencer. He fences. Isn't that what you call it? And so he was telling me about how you slice things up and, <laughs> no, well, how you... Mm, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I got it. Lunge. lunge, how you lunge. But um, anyhow, I, I just love, he says, now faith, no, but without faith it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is the rewarder of those that diligently. Oh, I love diligent. Like that means right now. I remembered it. the story about how God taught you what diligent was. You were eating a salad. See if you I get this right. You do remember. Now listen, see if I, I bet everybody that watches regularly can tell you this. That should be our trivia. Yeah. How did God <laughs> teach Dorothy what diligence is? No, yeah. you were eating a salad and you went to take a bite and God said, put that down. And you know, most of us really put that down. Unless you recognize that's the voice of God, you're just going to eat that bite of just salad. Just eat it and then listen. But you put it down right away and God told you that's what diligence is. Right away? Right away. All right. I you love don't that. put it off. You do it right now. When you, uh, it's like you catch a word here, then you just start operating in it right now. You just don't put it off. Well, I'll do it tomorrow or I'll do it the next day. It doesn't work like that. Diligence is right now. Um, you know, in Deuteronomy, I love that verse, and it's different places, but it says, if you will diligently hearken to the word of God. This, That's in me, Deuteronomy? 28. Mm -hmm. Deuteronomy 28. 
Yeah, and it shall come to pass if you shall hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments which I command you this day that the Lord will set you high above all nations on the earth and all these blessings will overtake you. And you ought to read the blessings sometimes. That's Deuteronomy 1 to 14. And those blessings are pretty good. I like them. One of them is, thou shalt lend and not borrow. Well, to lend, you have to have a lot of money, don't you? He said it's he that gives us power to get wealth so he That's can right. establish his covenant. And a lot of times we take Jesus as how poor he was. Mm -hmm. But he had enough money to support 12 people on the road. I mean, he had money. Mm -hmm. And so um, we need to take and know that it's the Father's good pleasure for us to prosper and he be He wants in to give us his will. Uh -huh. and, and it's not because God likes us so much. Or, or, I mean, it is, but what the whole thing is, establishing the kingdom here on earth, on earth. establishing his promises through us. If we do this, God will mm -hmm. do this so that it establishes yes, the, covenant. the covenant. And it shows people that are not believers, we should be set apart and different. And it shows, uh, you know, when God shows his promises through us, yes. it shows him, his glory on the earth so that he wants to do that. He wants to make his word come true. But you got to have faith. You got to have faith. And you got to be obedient to his word. And when mm -hmm. you are, Woo, what, what a what difference. Can yes. And you know, Jesus, I was looking up this verse. Everybody's probably noticed me on my phone over here. These are great, great tools when you need to look something up really fast. But you know, right after the, it's in Luke 18. It's right after the, it's talking about the story about the widow or the, the lady going to the, was she a widow? I think she was. Yeah, a widow of that city came to the judge repeatedly. Said, yes. I need this. I need this. She just kept having faith. The judge said no. She had more faith. She just went. went. <laughs> Probably because whatever she needed, she had already asked God for and she knew yeah. she had the faith. But Jesus says this, learn a lesson from this judge. Even as he re rendered a just decision in the end, so don't you think God will surely give justice to his chosen people who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? No. He says, I tell you, he will grant justice in them quickly. But he said... When the Son of Man returns, how many will he have find on earth, earth with faith? So we're talking about faith. Don't lose your faith. Don't lose it. No. Nope. Get it. You can't. I want to tell you something. It changes, the, it changes your life. Well, we have a music group tonight. In fact, Sam, who's the head of this group, I believe you are, aren't you, Sam? But, um, yeah. <laughs> but Sam used to be our sound man for uh, quite a while. Awesome sound man. Loved yeah. him. Very good sound yeah. man. And Great. now he has his band here. So... The four in the morning. Four. Now, where would that name come we'll from? We'll have to ask them. Okay, Sam, take it away. Thing to do. I know these past few days have been rough. Still, I can't think of anything but you. We started meeting here a few months ago. Every week we'd have dinner and talk the night through. I know you love me, you told me you cared for me, so Now I'm sitting here waiting for you Took a lot to take away What could have made it all okay But you ruined my day It had all been up to me I would have chosen to just let me be I guess it's too hard to see You told me 
you had something to say That it was too hard you had to say goodbye I haven't seen you since that day I haven't seen you and I still don't know why It took a lot to take away What could have made it all okay But you ruined my day mm -hmm. If it had all been up to me I would have chosen to just let it be I guess it's too hard to see How could you leave me here alone When I had made me all your own How could you leave me when I said I love you Has this dream just come and gone? Took a lot Take away what could have made it all okay, but you ruined my day. Oh, if it had all been up to me, I would have chosen to just let you be. I guess it's too hard to see. I guess it's too hard to see Stephanie, good morning. how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Good. Mail come. Yeah. Here you go. Thank you. Let's see, junk, junk. Hey, how are you? Good. Is there anything that you need to need a break for for you today? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh no. Is it okay? Can I call you right back? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Look, look what I gotta call Dorothy. For almost two decades, the Augusta, Georgia community has been a witness to God's favor, miracles, and love. From seeing a fuzzy picture hit the airways in the late summer of 1995 until today, TV 49 and Watchmen Broadcasting, along with viewers and partners alike, can stand and attest to God's faithfulness. With an empty building and faith, God demonstrated what could be done through acting upon His Word. With the obedience of founders Dorothy and Russell Spaulding, God was able to take a ministry that started with virtually nothing and grow it into one that is still touching the Augusta, Georgia region. Watching obstacles being removed, such as getting on the airways, to the original 36 channel being given to another city by the FCC, to lightning decimating the transmitter, to the FCC digital mandate upgrade, Watchman Broadcasting has endured without fail to stand today, still proclaiming Jesus Christ to the CSRA. 
In addition to these and thousands of unique miracles, TV49 and Watchmen Broadcasting launched multiple programs that have found their way to the worldwide stage. Such programs include Rock House Cafe, Club 36, and By the Book. These unique shows touch a wide range of age groups with powerful methods of ministry focused to reach the hearts of the depressed, hurting, and lost. Each miracle and workings of God's power has brought Watchmen Broadcasting nearly two decades to this point in time. Oh my goodness, <laughs> it's to buy the building. Oh my goodness. Go, oh, come on, Dorothy, answer the phone. Answer the phone. Oh, I can't believe it. Oh, he's dead. No, isn't that great? Hello? Oh, 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 my. You have Tamara, what's people. wrong with you? Oh, my goodness. We just got a check in. We just got a check in for $604,437.04. <laughs> yes, we did. God has done it. Today is a day of transition wrapped in expansion. But how? Will God do it? God continues to move in the most unusual ways, providing through an anonymous source to purchase a building for the ministry. This designated gift was given with the desire for it to be used towards a ministry home. From the beginning, the 1750 Knox Avenue address has housed the ministry of Watchmen Broadcasting. However, at this time, a purchase agreement for the current home of Watchmen Broadcasting has not been able to be reached. Therefore, a decision has been made for the future. For years, both current and adjacent properties where TV49 and Watchmen Broadcasting resides has been targeted for use expansion and ownership. Therefore, in accordance with the vision from God given to Dorothy and Russell Spaulding, Watchman Broadcasting TV 49 is moving to purchase and renovate the former Food Lion building in North Augusta, located just to the right of the current home of TV 49. The building is big, empty, and is looking for someone to fill it with purpose, and that is exactly our intent. With God's direction and you, our partner's faithfulness, the message of Jesus Christ is about to touch more souls than ever before. The camels are still coming. Amen. I'll tell you what, I get so excited every time I see that because uh, look what the Lord has done. That's all I can say. Look what the Lord has done. Why, we could just right now stop and just start shouting, look what the Lord has done in all of our lives. If we just look at even the little things, you know, we've been without air conditioning for over a month now. In the hottest time of July, uh, we're running 90 degrees upstairs. We've been sleeping in our basement. And I want to tell you something. I was fussing, and then I said, God, I'm sorry. You know what? I have a home. I have a place to sleep, and there's no reason for me to fuss. And I just had to repent and say, I'm sorry. Look what the Lord has done. He's Amen. taking care of us. And so we just need to, you've got to always rejoice. Find the good and the bad. And uh, you know what? My basement is cool. So that works. Well, Terry Sturgill is with us. And Terry, you are with Seed South is that it? Seed Line South. Seed Line South. Yes. Oh, yeah, there it is. I cut, I, you know, I just left a little part off of there. No, Seed Line South. What's Seed Line South? Seed Line South uh, actually involves churches, local churches, with hands-on Bible publishing. And by that, I mean that the church, as a ministry of that church, mm -hmm. puts together a John and Romans. Uh -huh. And therefore, they're sent to missionaries free of charge to those missionaries. Now, why John and Romans? John and Romans is used as an, an, a, a, for evangelism, as a tool for evangelism. Um, it, it, is, it is more economical to do a John and Romans than it is a, a New Testament or a whole Bible. Yeah. 
and uh, very easy to handle. Well, like in Romans, um, Romans got some, has some hard chapters, like Romans chapter 8, but let's not go there. But in there, like for example, he says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Yes. That's an important verse. Yes. Because it doesn't just mean I can't be good enough. That's right. You know, it all, every one of us says sin, and we have to accept Jesus. So that's a good reason for Romans. That's right. And it's got a lot of verses like that that are so important to us. Like, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes. For it's the power of God unto salvation. Woo. Amen. To everyone that believes. That's right. And um, so there's, that I can see why Romans, because of those verses. There's yes. some really important verses in there. So. You get involved with this. Look, can I see that little pamphlet? Sure. And this is this is the gospel of Jesus Christ according to John and Romans. And it's the whole, look at it, it's just the whole Bible. I mean the whole Bible of John, the whole book yes. of John, yes. and the whole book of Romans. Did they underline or do anything with some of the scriptures? Uh, they, on, on some they do. On some versions they do. On some languages they do. Uh, some they do not. Yeah, this one here, I don't think it does in the English language. Yes. Oh, well, yes, they did. Right here's one. My sheep will hear my voice, and that of a stranger's yes. they will not follow. Uh, let's see what they did with John 3.16. And um, there's another I love, John, because in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That's right. Oh, down here, but as many as receive him, to them he gave power that they may uh, become the sons of God. And then it has a little number. What's that number mean? It has like a number five. Uh, turn to page four. Uh, turn to, that's exactly right. Okay, we'll look at page four. What's? Well, we call that a marked edition. This is a marked edition. It leads you through the uh, Romans road and uh -huh. the uh, plan oh. of salvation. So that's why it's there. And then for God so loved the world. Yes. And then it says to turn to page eight. Oh, that's cool. In page 8, it says, For verily I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me has everlasting life. Exactly right. And he that believes not uh, shall not um, and have everlasting life and shall not come to condemnation, but pass from death unto life. And then there's, and it keeps telling you where to go, page 19. Let's go to page 19. Well... These are like Bible pages. Sometimes they like to stick together. They do. So, but anyhow, it has the whole salvation message. That's my sheep will hear my voice. Then turn to page 36. Uh, but, okay, this is in John 21. But these things are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that uh, you might have life believing through his name. And then it, it just keeps walking you through, like, to page 58. It does. And it has another verse for you. You need to wait. What's this? I missed page 57. Okay. Oh, it has the whole salvation message. It does. In, right in the there. back. Yes, ma'am. In there, in the back. It has the whole salvation message. You need a savior. You need to know you're lost. You cannot save yourself. Jesus has provided salvation and so on. And it's right. all right here. Yes. So if you don't know how to lead someone to Jesus, this is an excellent book for you to have, actually. But, so, you have these books. Yes, ma'am. And it costs how much to print one of these books? It, it uh, for a total uh, book, like you see, a completed book, okay. is about 17 cents. 17 cents. Yes. For a whole book like this. Yes. Now what do they do with these books? What they do is the church, when, it, when they put it together, uh, if they have a missionary in mind that they support or a missionary that needs scripture, they will keep them at their church and they will be in charge of shipping them to that missionary. If not, I will take them. We have a warehouse. I'm out of Providence Baptist Church there in Augusta. We have our own warehouse, and we actually have storage uh, that we can put the John and Romans there. And I get calls all the time from missionaries that need scripture. So I will send them to them uh, free of charge to those missionaries. That is awesome. Yes, ma'am. I love that. So now, 
if I was a pastor of a church mm -hmm. and I wanted to send these to our missionaries, mm -hmm. then you would go to him and you would say, or you'd come to me and you would say, we have these wonderful books, but do you have them in how many languages? Uh, we have the capability of uh, producing about 43 different languages. 43 different languages. Yes, ma'am. So, say I was going to South America, do they speak Spanish? Yes. So isn't that a Spanish one? <laughs> this is a Spanish, and they're going to have a Portuguese. Portuguese. Yes, ma'am. So if you're going to have a missionary in, say, South America, you'd have this in Spanish, like this, mm -hmm. John and Romans, and you'd supply this for the pastors down there that could pass them out. Absolutely. Absolutely. What a wonderful idea. And 16, 17 cents a book. Yes. And, and the, the great thing about it is that the church, instead of just putting money into an offering plate to purchase a Bible, they actually do it hands on. So their fingerprints will go all over the world. Now, what do you mean they do it hands? Do they put the books together? Yes, ma'am. They do it right there at their church as a ministry of their church. They put these books together? Yes, ma'am. Um, and how that works is... Uh, the pastor decides how many he would like to do as a project and then whether it's 5,000 or whether it's 10,000 or whatever and how many ever days they would like to do it whether it's well one day or two days or even a week-long project and they can actually I'll bring the staplers in I have, a, I have staplers I have a portable trimmer that trims 10 books at one time to the finished book that you see now and we will set it up and I will bring in unfinished John and Romans and there's seven steps in putting these together. But the only thing we need is people. And we will have people put them together there at their church. Wow, what a neat yes. thing. We're going to go to the band, and I want you to think about this, that this may be a wonderful project for you and your church. Yes. I think it's a great idea. I love stuff like this. And it's like you said, everyone's hands-on that you can pray over these as you're putting them together. Yes. Seven steps. You gotta have seven people in a row and just pass it down. And everybody do, does their step, yes. right? Yes. And so, um, anyways, you could youth groups, all kinds of things, it'd be great for them. We're gonna go to the song and then we will be right back.
the new building and we're waiting on you where are you come on down join us we'd love to help we're pretty much working every day over there including uh i don't know about the saturday so just give us a call if you want to come down hey get your whole group together get your friends together your youth group your church group some of our youth might still have some days before school i'm not sure who all started and who hasn't but get your group together and come down and just spend a couple of hours helping uh get that building ready you're going to want to say that you were part of the ground up a stage of that new building we know the people that are here that have been with this ministry for 18 years who were here in the very beginning they have such pride uh, good pride not bad pride but <laughs> but good pride and good just a sense of accomplishment of what they've done for the kingdom of god when they come in here and they look and look around and they remember doing this and doing that and just the, the it always brings them joy to come in and remember what they did so i just want to encourage you while you still have the opportunity to to come in and and uh just help on that new building let god use you that way do something for the kingdom of god because listen nothing you can't take anything with you you only stand before god with what you did for his kingdom so i just encourage you to come down and just uh be a part of the new building we'll be glad to help but give us a call first and we can let you know what's going on and who's over there and when's a good time and when's not and all that and uh, thanks for watching i'm heather i'm in the prayer room we're having a great time here tonight i hope you're enjoying our guests so far and our music guests and uh we do have you know the phone lines are available the prayer uh, partners are here to take your call and they uh, they're they want to pray with you they want to remind you what god has said about your situation so give us a call i'm going to read we got a couple of prayer requests but i've got mainly some praise reports that's what i'm going to read right now some praise reports because you know what god is good and it's just good to praise him praise him no matter what because he's worthy of all of our praise but it's always good and i was meaning to uh yes actually this is the same person she was so excited she called twice but I think it's actually um, two different praise requests. Okay, so let me find the first one. Here's the first one. Miss Tammy received rent money for next two months. She's been having a hard time uh, with her rent right now, but she received the rent money for the next two month, months after praying with our ministry. Uh, just the night before this, she received prayer uh, money for, minute, for rent for two months. So that's awesome praise report right there. <laughs> Woo! Anybody ever needed some rent money? Amen. And then uh, just last week, she said, praise God, don't have to move out of the house. Landlord has started to work things out with her and she is not being evicted. So that is awesome for Miss Tammy and we're so thankful to God for that. Uh, if you got a praise report, give us a call. We'll be happy to praise the Lord for you, with you and for you on the air. God bless you. Thanks for watching. We're going right back out to Dorothy. Amen. Well, we've been talking about Romans and John, John and Romans, these little books. Now, I have so many questions because, yes. I mean, what's the least amount you can do? If you were a personal one, person that you just wanted to bring a few people around and you wanted to do them. Well, we really don't have a least amount. Um, oh, so if I wanted to do 100, I could do 100. We'll let you do 100. Anything to get God's word out. Now, a lot of the churches do, um, would you say, 10 thousand the average project uh the average seed line project is about ten thousand ten thousand yes ma'am and that's only like sixteen seventeen hundred dollars yes so if you have some missions money you should do that 
and get your people involved in it. Because what I like what you said is you're leaving a fingerprint on all these pages that go all around the world to yes, different places. Yes. Isn't that cool? That is. That's awesome. They can be a missionary without even going. That's exactly right. And this is the key is the Word of God, what we have to give them. That's right. Wow. Many folks will never get a chance to go to a foreign field. They'll never get a chance to go on a missions trip. But through Seedline, their fingerprints go all over the world. I love it. Yes, ma'am. This, I even think, you know, if you could get your grandkids together, now, you know, that's what I think of, because I'm a grandma. I have 11 of them. Can you imagine? 11 grandkids. Oh, but wouldn't it be fun for a day to bring all your grandkids in and say, okay, we're going to do something for the Lord today. And here's what we're going to do for a project. And just have them all help you. And you could set them up and, wow. That would be great. You say, well, I don't have $1,600. Do what you can. Mm -hmm. 100 would only be $16 and something, right? Yes, ma'am. 100 you could do 1000 sure. You know, so figure out what you can do. And uh, we have Terry's phone number. We can get a hold of him for you. Yes. And uh, we'd love to have you get a hold of him because this is in... A 47 languages? 43 languages. 43 languages. Yes, and so... Uh, wouldn't that be wonderful for you to do this? Come on, I ought to hear the phones ringing off the hook. Get up from where you're sitting and say, you know what, I'm going to talk to my church about this. Or say, I'm going to talk to my school about it. I already told him the school I want him to go see. Yes. And get your church involved. And then if the church doesn't want to get involved, you get involved and do this. It's putting the gospel in someone's hand. You have a street ministry if you do. Wow, what a neat thing to hand out on the streets. This may be the only thing they ever see about Jesus. So I encourage you to do it. How did you get involved? Well, I got involved by prayer. Uh, my wife and I, we were active in our church in Awana. Mm -hmm. And we prayed for over a year for God just to use us in a mm -hmm. greater and mightier way. Uh, we were busy already. But we just believed that God wanted us to mm -hmm. do something more. So through prayer, uh -huh. uh, just myself and my wife, we didn't let anyone know, my pastor, no one, our family. God opened a door. And my pastor called me into his office one evening after we had prayed for, like I said, over a year. And said, Terry, I want you to pray about a ministry. It's called Seedline. And I didn't really know what Seedline was. Um, but... I said, okay, and he explained it to me, and I said, okay, Pastor, I'll pray about it. Well, that's really not what I was looking for. I was looking for maybe something like teaching a Sunday school class, mm -hmm. you know, something that I could keep my job and just come to church and, and serve the Lord. But the Lord had different plans. Well, through a series of circumstances, uh, I broke my ankle playing softball. I got laid off from work. Oh, that's uh, and, a few circumstances. Oh, I know. <laughs> I know. God was trying to get my attention. Mm -hmm. And I actually took a survey trip to Milford, Ohio, uh, up at First Baptist, there at Bearing Precious Seed, and just to see if that's where the Lord was leading us. Well, I came back, and I, I, I wasn't convinced. I was confused. And I, we began to, to pray even that much harder. And the Lord just burdened our heart for the scripture and burden our heart for those lost souls and that door was opened and August 1st of 2011 we moved to Milford Ohio to train for this ministry and we were there for two years and wow. we've been back in Augusta for uh, for about a month now Wow yes, look at God yes ma'am and he'll teach you he'll train you He'll, you know what? All you have to be is willing yes. to do whatever he wants you to do. Yes, that's right. And a willing heart he can use. Yes. I love it. So now you're doing this full time? I am doing it full time. Yes, ma'am. Wow. Passing the word of God out around the nation. Yes. That's pretty powerful. Yes. I love the, I love the idea of it. You guys all like it here? Yes. Is this your church? No, ma'am. Oh, <laughs> my, my wife okay, is Okay, church, you ought to get, we have a lot of people sitting here, and you ought to get involved in this. Because <laughs> if you just, 
What a neat way for a church to get a project. They could do a Friday night or a Saturday all day or yes. something. Yes. Uh, on average, on uh, average. about 25 folks can put together 10,000 John and Romans in about eight hours. Okay, you got that? In eight hours, 25, 25 people, people can put together 10,000. Wow. Yes, ma'am. Just think, 10,000 people's lives could be changed. And then I would pray over these, Oh, Father, That's put this book in the right hands. Oh, yeah. Lead someone to the Lord or someone who's already saved. Let them use it as a witnessing tool for when they go out. Yes. Yes. Wow. I was actually privileged to go to Bulgaria last September on a missions trip. And in two weeks, we passed out 155,000 oh. John Romans in the Bulgarian language. Wow. And we've seen over 246 souls come to Christ. Come on. That's really wonderful. Yes, ma'am. Just think, you know, I was sitting in, our, in church on Sunday, and I noticed one young man, and I just couldn't get him off my heart. And I went back to him, and I said, do you know Jesus? That's all people are waiting for, is That's for right. someone to go say, do you know him? Do you love him? Because I've asked the Lord to show me something. When people don't know him, just flames on their heads. So I know. Now, does he always do? No. no. But I want to tell you something. I'm led to people because I don't want them to go to hell. That's right. Hell's a horrible place. That's right. And even it's your worst enemy. You don't want him to go there. And if he is your worst enemy, you need to be sure to go to that person, tell him that you forgive him and that you love him, and then go help them to find Jesus. Right? Absolutely. Well, um, you still have time. Go to your phones right now. I think the phone line should be jammed saying, I want to do this. My church wants to do this. Come on, get up from where you're sitting right now. Go to your phone and say, or just tell me that you're going to tell your church about it. Because... Giving the Gospel of John and Romans out to people. A lot of people think they could be good enough, but this makes it very clear. That's All have sinned and come short of the glory of Nobody's God. Nobody's good enough. Mm -mm. Give us a call. We'll be back. So long when America crashes. 
Welcome back. We have got Pastor Craig Arlington, and you have uh, which church? Uh, Are we're you an evangelist? At, no, we're at Lighthouse Fellowship Light, in Edgefield. In Edgefield, Lighthouse Fellowship. Mm -hmm. Are those your people out there? They are. Okay, well, I'm trying to stir up Craig to do this Bible thing. I think this is awesome, you guys. <laughs> this should be a really easy project. You know, if everybody, if you don't have missions money, which every church should have. But if everybody did, say, $16, that's 100 That's right. Everybody's got $16. That's right. You know? And that's not much. That's 100 So um, then get a bunch of people together. I love the project. Whenever you put the Word of God in someone's hands, you've done what he said. That's right. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. Amen. And you do it with the Word right there. Okay, well, Pastor Craig, um, you've had a lot of struggles over the last eight years. We have. Well, tell me what's happened. Well, um, over the last eight years, I, I believe that God has begun to condition us and to mold us and make us uh, into what He's wanted us to be. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember when I first got into the ministry that, you know, uh, that I, that I thought it was uh, this is what God wants and I'm not going to change that. This is what He wants and that's the way I'm going to do it. Because you want to be obedient to what He wants. That's right. But uh, as I begin to mature in the Lord and as I begin to uh, listen to His voice, uh, God began to speak to me and, and show me some different things. But I believe that the biggest tool that was used was the struggles that I've been through in my life because I believe uh, when you go through the valleys, I believe that's when God's working the most in your life. Uh, I think He can work on the mountaintops, but it's the things that we go through that He's able to mold us and make us into what we need to be. Um, you know, uh, right now in 
MCG, we have a three month old, be three month old, uh, three months the 15th, uh, baby boy. Uh, Yours? Yes, uh, Logan. Uh, he was born at uh, 23 weeks. Uh, the doctor said he should, shouldn't make it, he shouldn't be there, but praise God, he is. Wow. He's here, and uh, God's been good. And he's still three months in the. In the ICU. In the ICU. Children. And they say next month he should be coming home. But God's just been amazing. Uh, I remember when God called us to uh, come to Edgefield, uh, that we uh, give up a job, give up a home, and, and, and just follow God. But God's made a way in each and everything we've been through. He does, doesn't he? Now, He's, what's wrong with the son? He was born early and had some problems with his lungs. He weighed one pound and six ounces. Wow. And uh, right now he weighs five pounds, four ounces. Uh, God's given him strength. He just had a surgery today. He's getting closer to coming home every day. Uh, his, his little lungs were not uh, mature where they needed to be, but they have they've really grown. God's been good. I give him all the praise for it. Well, of course. Yes. So, uh, evidently, the the lungs weren't breathing right. They weren't working right. They were. And now, that's right. What kind of surgery did they do today? Well, he had a, a hernia that they they operated on today uh, and took He's care of. He's too little for a He's hernia. He's too little for a hernia. That's right. It stops in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It stops. Amen. You know. Um, I'll tell you what, I hate what the enemy does. That's I right. especially hate what he does to children. That's right. And we just say, it's done. Your, your work is finished. You know, my little Michael, the same kind of thing happened with him. He was not born preemie, but he had a lung problem. And um, I guess they gave him, maybe he had fluid or something, they, they gave him some stuff to help him. And for the first four months, he didn't gain any weight. Mm. And then Chris and Tamara took him and said, look, every good and perfect gift comes from God. You're a good and perfect gift. They held him up before the Lord and prayed over him. And two days he gained two pounds, something like that. Amen. And today he's strong, he's healthy. But the enemy, I think, tries to take our kids out. He does. Before they come, they have a calling on their lives. That's right. And each and every one of them has a special task. Um, each of my children went through a death experience. I had three. The oldest son fell 40 feet into a stone quarry mm. at four years old, and God spared his life. My daughter, grand, I mean my daughter, oh my goodness, she was a miracle from day one. She would always climb up on the counters and get to the very top shelf to take pills. We had to have her stomach pumped, I don't remember how many times. She would just crawl up those things, and then uh, one day she fell out of a car onto the highway. She had opened the door, the car seat fell out, and she fell out. And the semi was coming this way and put on his brakes, could have hit her. Mm. But God spared her life. Amen. And then my baby son in a pool, he drowned in a pool. And they, he was all blue when they picked him up. They did CPR. They took him to the hospital, and next day he was fine. Amen. So look at God. Amen. They, I'm telling you, the enemy wants your children, but you plead the blood of Jesus over them, and That's that'll right. do it, right? That's right. That's what right. are some of the other things that you went through? Well, um, we have, uh, like I say, when we moved down, uh, we moved down and, and thought, uh, we had some jobs lined up. We was coming to pastor's church, and things fell through that didn't go through the way we thought they were going to go. So it was about three months there. We was without work. Uh, didn't really have a whole lot of source of income. But uh, through that all, God supplied every need we That's had. Me. You know, I, <laughs> I'll go back to the scripture. It says that I've never seen the righteous forsaken or seed begging mm -hmm. bread. And not one time did I have to beg for anything. People always gave. It was always there. And uh, I, I thank God. Uh, you know, I give him praise before because I, I don't think we can ever praise him enough for yes. what he does for us. That's exactly right. Were there any other major things? Well, I, um, we, um, 
And this happened a little bit before, but when we were about 10 years old, the doctors had uh, diagnosed us with, uh, uh, they said it was cirrhosis of the liver. And, and I thought, you know, everybody says, I always heard that was from drinking when I was 10 years, 10 old. years old. I wasn't <laughs> drinking. But uh, we had to have major surgery. They give us a 50-50 chance to live then. But God had a different plan in our life. He had, uh, he had a work for us to do. Uh, we went through the the surgery there, and I can remember my father saying that they had just pints and pints of blood, but uh, they didn't have to use one pint of blood on us. We went through the surgery, and uh, I thank God, you know, from, from day one, he's had his hand on us, and he does every one of us. Mm -hmm. That's pretty big for a 10-year-old, isn't it, Amen. to go through that? yes. We have another pastor with you, and we're going to get with him here in just a minute. It'll be after the top of the hour. But uh, while I'm with you, I just want to talk to some of the things, because you may have struggles, and you think it's only you, but it's not. And you are an overcomer. Amen. I mean, you have a child still in the hospital, but that child's coming home. Amen. And he's going to come home healthy and strong. That's right. And then uh, the other, you know, when you lose, you think you have a job, and you don't have a job, and That's right. you got to trust God for everything. You may be there. Amen. This may be your story. Maybe even, you know, other things happen. But I want to tell you something. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. That's right. Or a That's seed right. begging for bread, just as Pastor said, and it's very important you know that. Whatever you're going through, just give it to Him. He'll carry you through. Yes. You know, I, I was on Facebook the other day, and I was talking about a man that came by here, and he wanted a job. He says, all I want is a job. Well, you could go in there since you don't have a job, plant a seed, volunteer, and he walked away. He just wanted a job. Mm. You see, I want to tell you something. There's a way to overcome bad things. Amen. If the enemy steals your jobs, they say, well, I'll go to work for this ministry and I'll just volunteer my time and watch how quick you get a job. You don't want you doing that. And so I just tell you, uh, he, there's an answer for every problem out there, isn't there? There is. There is. Yeah. And now you've been pastoring how long? I've been pastoring uh, and a regular pastoring about 10 years. 10 years. About 10 years. And so you've learned how to walk by faith in those years? Learned how to walk by faith. I believe, you know, the Bible says without faith it's impossible to mm -hmm. please God. And I, I, I am a... Uh, God pleaser. That's right. That's right. That's right. I believe in having faith. Well, my dear, just stay with us. We're going to go to a break. And then we'll be back with Pastor Quirles, and we're just going to have a good time tonight. And then later on, Heather and I are going to do some Bible study on faith. We'll be back in just a minute. And things went from bad to worse to worse. And all of a sudden, I just didn't want to live. And that's when I went, and I would call every night on PTL. I would call the uh, 700 Club. I would call all these people. And the PTL, there was a man at PTL, I'll never forget it. He called, I called him and he said, Dorothy, I'm going to keep praying for you. And 30 days later, when I was one day so messed up, I just got in my car and I started driving. Supernaturally, I didn't head for PTL. Supernaturally, I ended up at PTL. How? I don't know, but through this man's prayers. So I went there to the prayer tower. and. I never forget this man, I was sitting there just crying my eyes out. And this guy came and he sat beside me, an old man, he put his arm around me. And I was just crying and the Holy Spirit revealed who I was. He said, Dorothy, is that you? And I said, yes. And he said, I have been praying for 30 days that God would bring you here. 30 days that man prayed for me. It was there my life was changed. Why do I love Christian television? It saved my life. It really did. I don't know where I would be or what I would do. But night after night after night, I would make calls to all. That's why I like the prayer phones. That's why my heart is so much for those prayer phones. And it breaks my heart when we don't have anybody back there. Many nights I'll look, I'll say, is there anybody on the prayer phones? And if there's nobody there, 
Who would have been there for me? It's those prayer lines that got me to have a man praying for me that got me to PTL, changed my life forever. You know, I play that about the prayer lines and how important it is to me, it saved my life. And how many lives could you help if you just were here on the prayer lines? You know, my friend said today, she said, Dorothy, I can remember when those, all those lines would be full of people every single night. And I said, I remember that too. But people, they leave and they come and they leave. But I'm looking for somebody who is going to be caring more about God than social media, caring more about God and sitting home and kick, kicking their feet up and just saying, oh, I'm just going to rest here tonight and feed myself with garbage. I'm looking for somebody who loves the Lord so much they'll do anything to snatch somebody out of hell. That's what I'm looking for. So if you're that person or those persons, come on down and be a part of our prayer team because I'm telling you, that is the, that is the hub of this ministry. That and master control are the two things that, wow, we can be here all night talking to you, but there's nobody on those prayer phones. What a shame that is. So we're asking you, please come and be a part. Maybe you're a church out there and you could come and, you know, one night a month, say, we're going to take the second Tuesday of every month or we're going to take this of every month and we will be a prayer partner team for you. We'll hook up with you. Well, you know what? It's a blessing for you to do that because we hook up with you and we'll help you with things. So come on, be a part. And um, that's all I got to say about that. No. <laughs> Anyways, Pastor, um, now we have Pastor Dale Quarles, and you're the founding pastor of Lighthouse Fellowship, right? Yes, ma'am. And how long were you the founding pastor? I mean, how long did you have the church? <clears throat> About 15 years. About 15 yes, years. Yes, ma'am. We started off in a house. I had 50 people the first service. 50 people the first yes, service. Everybody liked that. <laughs> <laughs> and... and uh, and, you know, and God just blessed us. You That's know, awesome. And, uh, but uh, I, I appreciate the opportunity to come, you know, with hopes of helping other people mm -hmm. because my body has been through a lot. Let's talk about what happened to your body. And uh, uh, back in 1982, uh, even a young man, it just seemed like things come against me, but... Uh, and you know, when you run from God, things is going to happen. Yep, they will. And, and I have to admit that I run from God. I was called in the ministry at 16 years old. And you ran all those years? And I run from God. And it cost us. Mm -hmm. it, it really does. But you know, even the things that I've been through, I give God the glory. Because... I've been dead three times. Dead? Yes, ma'am. Did you uh, see anything when you died? Well, no, ma'am. Not that I remember. But uh, I've had a lot of people ask me that. But the first time was in 1982. And... Did you code? I was um, on my motorcycle over in Johnston, South Carolina. And uh, a drunk hit me head on. Oh my and it threw me over the car and down the road and messed me up all over. Well, I didn't know nothing about it. I still don't remember anything about the accident, but uh, <coughs> uh, they covered me up for dead. And uh, a lady that I knew that had been to our church and in meetings with us, she was a nurse. And she come by, and I, I don't know the whole story. But anyway, she got involved, and she uncovered me, and I wasn't dead. I had a pulse. So they carried me into the hospital and, uh, you know, praying people. You know, I had a lot of praying people. and uh, But I was messed up, bust, busted my kidneys, uh, broke me all up, said I'd never be able to walk again and all that, but I did. You did. <laughs> and God really, you know, blessed me. And I was in the ministry, but I still wasn't doing what God exactly wanted me to do. Really? And, uh, you know, uh, I love to help you, 
I love to help pastors, and I love to sit back and run the sound booth. I do anything you want to done, but I wasn't crazy about pastoring. <laughs> I can understand that. <laughs> but you know, God took me from the back and put me in the front, and things happened, and I ended up starting a church. And then we built the church that we're in now, and uh, things, you know, went along. And uh, but, uh, like I say, I had trouble with my heart, and I went. Uh, I've got 22 stents in my heart. Wow. Uh, I've had 38 heart catheterizations, two old March surgeries. I've got pins in my left leg. We was building our church. I uh, fell. We was over in North Augusta getting pews. I fell through a trailer, busted the right under my knee, the main bone like crust eyes. Daughter said I'd never walk again, but I did. But I did. I love that. Uh -huh. But you know, I'm a firm believer that uh, Philippians 4 and 13 says that I can do all, all things, things through Jesus Christ yeah. who strengthens me. Yeah. And I believe that. I do too. So if God, you know, Paul said that, but if God says that, and it's true, and I believe everything in this Word. Yeah. Everything. Everything. Firm believer. And so God says I can do it, so I can do it. Yes, you can. And, and, and I just praise God, because I'm going to tell you something. You know, from what doctors is good, and from what they're saying all, my main doctor there in Edgefield, my medical doctor, she just shakes her head. <laughs> she, she, she said, I, you know, 15 years ago, they said I wouldn't live. And then it was over. But honey, it ain't over until God says it's That's over. exactly right. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm excited. You know, we, we didn't know at the time, but I lost my wife three and a half years mm -hmm. ago. Uh, 2009, uh, my wife passed away on December the 11th. And uh, December the 16th, we'd been married 48 years. Wow. And I tell you, precious years. But uh, God's always been there for me. Mm -hmm. I've been by myself. He's been there. I, I, like I say, I was on the table twice, and they was doing catheterizations, and I died to the point where they had to use the paddles and they had to beat me and all of this, you know, and, and uh, but you know, God's always been on the scene. Mm -hmm. And I've seen a lot of miracles. God has me to pray for the sick. Uh, I've seen one miracle behind another and I, I kind of argued with God a little bit. I said, God, you know, I need healing. Yeah. <laughs> I heard that. That I'm sicker than some of the sick. You know, and he said, yeah, but I'm the one that's doing the healing. Amen. Amen. And I remember Paul, you know, with the thorn in the flesh, you know, and I said, well, you know, it don't matter as long. And so, you know, God's always with us. Okay. I'm going to come right back. All right. Okay. Yep. And uh, we'll be back. We're going to go to a song. And you get up and go to your phone. We'd love to hear from you tonight. I have some people that want to take your call. So come on, get up and go to your phone. Let's go to the song. Is love a feeling? Is love a word? Is love a thing you do or a thing you learn? Is 
love the way you treat someone who treats you well. Or is love a secret you find someone to tell? Is love a thing you try? Is love a way of life? Is love the way you find someone to be your wife? Is it a feeling? Is it a word? Is it a song I've never The journey of Watchman Broadcasting began in 1995. After eight miracle-filled years of walking the cross across America, Dorothy and Russell Spalding felt the prompting of God to begin a Christian television station in Augusta, Georgia. Upon returning from a ministry trip, the Spaldings decided to drive back home through Augusta, Georgia, just to verify that they indeed were being pulled to that city. After driving through Augusta, the couple knew that God was getting ready to place them here. With their commitment to God made to come to Augusta and less than a hundred dollars. Dorothy and Russell began to work out of a hotel room on Washington Road so as to raise awareness and community involvement in the area. One obstacle had to be overcome, where to house the vision of the future network. 
Having secured the tower site, Dorothy and Russell began driving around to find a suitable location for the studios. They drove up to a building on Knox Avenue in North Augusta. While sitting in the parking lot, they felt that they had found the place. Their faith was put to the test immediately when the owner quoted the monthly price at $7,000. With another figure in their heart, they went to return the keys after viewing the building. They then asked the owner if they could hold a one-time event in the building on July the 21st of 1995. Calls were made and invitations sent. Thus, the stage was set for open house. Just before the event, the owner of the building agreed to the event and a $2,000 a month figure that Dorothy Spalding had had in her heart. After trading and bartering for weeks, preparations were complete for the big night and the filming of the very first Club 36 on July the 21st, 1995. With pastors, fellow believers, community leaders, and special guests all gathered at a still fairly empty building, the vision for the future worldwide ministry began to be revealed. Opening night was a complete success. However, later that night, the initial owners of the television license pulled the Spaldings aside and informed them that participating in the vision of raising up Augusta, Georgia would be too big for them to participate in. With another test of their commitment to God's mandate, Dorothy and Russell Spaulding stood firm and asked if they could raise the station by faith. The owner of the license replied, yes. After concluding a successful opening night, the next obstacle for the very young ministry was to get on the airways. The transmitter was in place, but the device needed to send the signal from the studios to the tower was yet to be purchased. The STL or studio transmitter link which was needed was at a hefty price tag of $8,000. Dorothy contacted the owners of the license and asked if they could help, but found out that they could not. Not sure how to resolve the situation, Dorothy and Russell prayed for wisdom and came into agreement that the need would be met. Dorothy then received a call from a gentleman that asked what the station needed. Dorothy's response was $8,000. The gentleman then replied, you've got it. From that very moment forward, miracle after miracle began to take place. From pastors to local businesses and ministries, materials and labor began to pour in. From lumber to paint, furniture to equipment, support came from everywhere. Sets began to take form, nightly productions became the norm, and lives began to be changed. Month after month, year after year, the station, TV 36, saw expansion and growth. In 2001, with an FCC requirement, the 36-channel license was moved from Augusta and given to another city. Dorothy Spalding quickly called the station lawyers in Washington, D.C. to ask what needed to happen. The lawyers gave specific instructions, and Dorothy followed them. As with previous years, God made a way. The station went from TV 36 to TV 49, moving from 1,000 watts of power to 150,000 watts of power. Increasing the potential viewership, TV 49 not only expanded with its over-air coverage, but with local cable systems as well, being picked up by three of the four major cable systems in the CSRA. Watchman Broadcasting's desire to reach the world with unique Christian programming began to take place in 2002 with the launch of Rock House Cafe locally. Then in 2003, Rock House went national, and finally in 2004, international. Following Rock House Cafe came by the book in 2003, going national that same year and international in 2004. Both Rock House Cafe and By the Book continue to make their mark to this day, having received multiple Angel, Telly, and Davy Awards. A further test of the resolve of the ministry came in 2006 when the station's transmitter was hit and all but destroyed by lightning. Functioning with only 10% power for the next four months, God began to work another miracle for Watchman Broadcasting to purchase one of the industry's best transmitters. The new transmitter enabled TV49 to transmit its signal stronger and further than ever. Then in 2009, the mandate from the FCC came down from Washington, D.C. 
this mandate offered another chance for God's faithfulness to be shown. In January 2009, with not all finances raised, deadlines were moved, and God placed it upon the hearts of many across the CSRA and America to make sizable donations so that TV49 could complete its FCC-mandated digital upgrade. And so the story has been with Watchmen Broadcasting and the founders, Dorothy and Russell Spaulding, miracles, signs, and wonders. Every time it would look like failure would be the final word, God always stepped in and made a way. Why? With over 15 years of ministry, over 12,000 recorded salvations, 3,600 prevented suicides, and multiple hundreds of thousands of ministry calls answers that question. Watchmen Broadcasting, 15 years later, and still television that changes lives. And now 18 years later, and we're still television that changes lives. And you were just asking about the building next door and how it's coming. And God, just like he did it here, we said we're never going to borrow any money. We're not going to borrow any money. We never have to. God takes care of it. And uh, we need it, and we were praying for a... Uh, Heather, maybe you can get a mic just for a minute and talk to our camera person here just for a minute. But uh, we were praying for <laughs> a um, person to pull the permit. We desperately needed a permit pulled for temporary electric. Well, guess what? A gentleman walks in and says he's a master electrician, he went down in. today, oh. and he pulled the permit. Amen. So we can have temporary electric over there. Praise God. Amen. And uh, I was able to talk to the city today, and they said everything's in order. We can go ahead and pull temporary permit. Poles the electric. Uh, Heather, let's talk about who you have with you. Oh, did we lose him? Okay, maybe he's not there yet. But th that's how God works. It's like, what do we need for today? We've got everything done. They were sweeping out the place today. We're going to have to have some cement work done in there. If you're a cement finisher or you need to do cement work, we need you to show up now. But we're going to go back to Heather because she has somebody that was on the camera tonight, and now he's the one that pulled the permit. Let's talk to Heather about it. That's right. We have Michael Scott right here in the uh, prayer room. He's been on the cameras. He's been on It's Time to Pray. You've been around a week and done a lot of stuff. Yes, so, yeah, so we, but he's helping us uh, with our building next door. And just tell us a little bit about what's going on next door. Um, well, a week ago, I actually uh, met Russie, Russell and Mrs. Dorothy. I met Russell first. He was over there just sweating, trying to uh, get cleaned up. And uh, as I got to know everybody, Dorothy and Russell and you and John, I uh, found out that y'all are Jesus-filled people, and I wanted to be—I I wanted to be a part of it. So I went and had to do everything as far as uh, pulling the permits. I went in and pulled the permits, and, and just trying to make things happen. As we, as the body of Christ, need to stick together and watch out for each other, and, and I understand this. And and everybody's good people here, yeah. and I—I I enjoy it and every day that I'm here. Every since I've been here uh, five days ago, every day I learn something new every day. So I mean, praise God. That's right. Well, that's a lot to be said. That's right. We have some clappers back here. That's a lot to be said because you actually are a Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic I, I, uh, scholar. I, yes, I, I, I studied don't Hebrew, care. Greek, and Aramaic. Um, I started 13 years ago. I had a couple of uh, Bible scholars. One out of Colorado. One out of Kingsport, Tennessee, and. Uh, uh, I always put one verse in first is uh, knowing this first and no prophet, prophecy of scriptures with any private interpretation that in old times holy men spake as they was moved by the Holy Ghost and this means that it doesn't matter what we think it means it's what God says it means because it's God's story and so I uh, study to shoot, my, to shoot thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not be ashamed, ashamed rightly right. dividing the word of truth yeah. Amen. Amen. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Uh, tell me about uh, what what does pulling a permit, what does that mean? Uh, uh, well, really, uh, 
they paid for everything. As far as me and my labor, it, it's going to be free because it, it's all about God. But um, uh, I, me being a master electrician on an electrical company around this place for about seven or eight years, um, I just had to go and, you know, you, you got to go through the steps, the processes of, of, of our government uh, to take care of this stuff. And, and North Augusta has been real helpful. They've watched out for us and, and trying to work with us in any way they can. Okay. So we got everything taken care of today. That's right. Well, that is awesome. Yeah, we do have to submit to the governing authorities over yeah. us. It says we need permits and we need to pull permits and need plans. And so we're doing it the right way because it's for the kingdom. And we yeah. and you know what? God, just like you, has sent uh, many, many people, uh, Michael, around whatever we needed. He has sent. So you're just another step in the plan that God, God is puzzling Amen. this together. He's piecing this together. Yes. And you're just another piece of the puzzle and and if you'd like to be a piece of the puzzle come on down and we'd love to get you some get get you started uh helping we're going to get you back out to the cameras because yes. you've got another job to yes, do you're just racking up jobs so yeah well thank you so much michael thank you, thank you so thank much you. for all that you're doing um so if you'd like to help get come on down give us a call we'll show you every everybody has a place here and whether you are a master electrician or a mom at home whatever you whatever you are Whatever your talent is, it can be used right here for the kingdom of God. Dorothy? Thanks, Heather. Um, I just want you to see that how God provides. I mean, Michael just walked in here. We talked to one of our cameramen the night before who's a contractor, and we said, do you know any master, we ask everybody, any <laughs> master electricians? And he said, yes, by the way, I do. And he called them, and so Michael just came, and look here, now we have... Uh, pulled the permit and that was the next thing we had to do so we can get a little electric in there so we can work so praise God he is awesome Amen. well pastor you experienced that same thing didn't you yes ma'am you said when you needed it it was there it was there isn't that so always there you know the main thing is a lot of time we get impatient but you know, God's gonna do things on His time too. Yes, He is. So as long as we stay patient, and y'all was talking that earlier in the show about faith, it's all about faith. Yeah. You know, I got saved by faith. Yeah. I've never seen Him, but I know He's there. Yes. According to His Word. And uh, yeah, when we was building our church, things just like y'all said, we was needing pews and everything. And we bought uh, 20 15 foot pews, the Bible stand, the uh, table, and everything for $3,000. 3000 Tell me that ain't gone. <laughs> and one of yeah. those pews run about 3000 Yeah, right. Padded pews, you know. So God just done that. It, it's just, man. We got nine and a half acres of land there, and uh, God, God is really blessed. And I was telling you during the break a while ago about we was praying for Pastor Craig and those, uh, and he was sitting in my house, and he got to telling about the vision, and it's the same vision that God had gave me in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And, and that's the way he does. So that's how you chose, Pastor. Yes, ma'am. Because he gave you the same vision. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, it's sad if you got people coming in and they don't have your same vision. Oh, it's your way. And that that's, happened. That happened. In between uh, me and him. Uh, and it about destroyed the church. Yeah. And I had to take it back for a while. But God has, oh, I, I'm going to tell you, you know, I'll tell you a lot with my health. God is just so so good you you can depend on him I, i've laid in the hospital many a time and they said i wasn't gonna make it but you know he's so wonderful and i want to get that word out to anybody mm -hmm. you know to myself i'm a, i'm nobody but with god i'm somebody you're somebody mm -hmm. and uh just getting the word out and i'd like to say to other ministers and pastors you know, any way that I can be a blessing and tell you people, you know, because I know it's real. Yeah. I know it's real uh, because he's done it for me. And uh, like I say, I've been dead. They, the doctors just shake the head. And uh, I said, well, you know, God's not through with me yet. No, people he's not. People keep telling me that. 
Yeah. And, but he's just so wonderful. You know, my dad had a heart attack. And so they were getting him ready to fly him down to Orlando. This is in Florida. And he reached over. We all came in to pray for him and anoint him. And he reached over and took the Bible that was in the drawer, the Gideons. That's why he loves Gideons mm -hmm. so much. He opened it up, put it on his chest like this, and he says, Lord, my time's not up yet. I still got more preaching to do. And I'm just asking you for a new heart, and I thank you for it. Something so simple. Went down to do the stress tests and things that they took down there in Orlando. And they said, you go home. You have the heart of a young man. Now yeah. look at God. Yeah. I'm telling you something. It doesn't just happen to preachers. It happens to people who have faith to believe right. that he can do it. Right. And that's what it's all about is the faith. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. What say you, Pastor Craig? <laughs> You're Craig, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I have to make sure. I got all these pre 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 preachers here tonight. Preachers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got them too. <laughs> you know, God, God has uh, been good to us at the church. Uh, we've seen over 20 get saved. Uh, we've seen the, the power of God manifest itself. Uh, we are, that's right, we're healings. We had, uh, we had some get delivered the other night, uh, delivered service. It was just awesome to see the hand of God at work. Uh, I am in a place where I'm tired of having traditional church, just the norm. Uh, you know, the Pharisees and Sadducees had church, but they had a uh, routine, a normal they went by. Yeah. And I think that's what we get caught up in so mm -hmm. many times is tradition. But I'm ready to let God take control and have control of the church. Uh, the body of Christ as he is, and he ought to be able to use it as he sees fit. Yeah. Uh, I think a lot of times we put God in a box and put him to the side in the church, and we like to be seen and heard. But I think if we'll let God move, uh, we'll see some awesome things yeah. happen, and uh, we're seeing it in Edgefield. Mm -hmm. God's moving. The Holy Ghost is moving. We're seeing souls saved, lives changed, and, uh, you know, I'm excited about what he's doing. It's, uh, we said the other night over in Jeremiah, he said, it's like a fire shut up in my bones, yeah. uh, and I cannot contain myself, and I am. That's the way I feel. I get so excited about seeing what God's doing, our youth program growing. We're uh, in the process of purchasing a new building, a uh, fellowship and youth area. Come on. Uh, God's just, I mean, when he blesses, he blesses. He blesses. And uh, I thank him for it. You know, I got to tell you, and I don't know if you all heard this, but this is the year in the Hebrew. I'm very much involved with Israel. This is the year in the Hebrew of 5773. Well, if you'll take the decade, 7-3. The seven means the I-ing. His eye has been watching you. Where are you up to? What are you doing? The three means gimel, which is camel. And that means the camels are coming. Read Isaiah 60, verse 1 to 6. And verse 6 said, the camels are coming. When the camels came, they always bore great gifts. Amen. And I believe this is a time for revival. Amen. I believe that people are going to get so blessed that they're going to want to give. Amen. I believe that the blessings of Abraham are coming Amen. and to the house, to the people that have been faithful. Amen. And the end time harvest is being brought in by those gifts that the camels are bringing. Amen. Because we need a revival in the land. That's right. And I believe it's coming, and that's what I think you're feeling. That, Amen. That beginning of revival. It's the only thing that will turn this nation around. That's right. Yeah. That's so, right. That's what I believe. Well, we're going to go to some music um, with... Now, listen. This is Sam Reed. He used to be our sound man. He took off and went to school, which is a good thing. But... Uh, he made the group name Four in the Morning, and I wish, Sam, you would tell us, why did you call this Four in the Morning? Well, uh, Zach and I and Cody all go to Covenant College together, so the first time Zach and I ever wrote a song together, which was the um, first song that we played this last hour, we started writing at 12 midnight, 
and uh, Zach really wanted to just write something and I had kind of written stuff on my own before and I wanted to write something with someone else so we started writing a song and finished writing it at four in the morning um, and eventually when looking for a name discovered that most of our songs or at least a good number of them were written or finished at about four in the morning um, just the creative sort of inspiration kind of gets going late at night so that's where that name came from and so we we hold true to that and continue to find time to write late at night Watchmen Broadcasting is now on Roku. After purchasing your Roku box, hook it up to your TV and internet connection and look up Watchmen Broadcasting. Once you locate Watchmen Broadcasting, add it as a channel and begin watching us. As you enjoy quality Christian programming, make sure that you rate our channel. The higher our rating, the more exposure Watchmen Broadcasting will be able to receive. Watchmen Broadcasting, changing lives worldwide. Now that Roku box, I have a copy of it right here. This is the box that comes in, and you go to Walmart or Best Buy, they have it. I should have it here. It's 1080 HD. That's what you want to get. You need high-speed internet, and you plug it into the wall and into the back of your TV. The wonderful thing about it is 
There's over 600 channels on here and probably close to 100 Christian channels. All your major Christian channels are on here. So all you have to do is go to religion or religious channels and come down to Watchmen Broadcasting. And you can get us 24 hours a day, no matter where you are. So tell your friends on Dish and Direct, they don't have to pay that fee anymore. They can get this with no monthly fee. 80% of everything on here is free, and we happen to be free. So uh, along with many others, there's over 6 million people have this box in America. How about you? Do you need this box? Do you know a friend that needs this box? So... Um, what we like to show that because a lot of times you're from Edgefield, you don't, you're not picking us up out That's there. Right. I was told that they could pick us up out there, but if you're not, that um, all you need is high-speed internet, and then you can get this box. And like I said, 80% of everything on this box is free. So it's worth it. It's worth looking into. R O K U. And you want to get, it costs $79 to $100, and you want to get it. Well, we want to wrap up with you guys. What would you like to leave about the church or that you would like to say? First pastor. Well, i just <clears throat> like to say that, you know, if there's anyone in Edgefield uh, that needs the church, you know, I don't believe in uh, pulling people out of their churches, but, you know, there's so many people that don't have a church. Uh-huh. And uh, we got our youth program going, and uh, God's really blessing in this field today. And uh, I believe, talking about the revival, I believe with all of my heart that a revival is coming, and it's going to hit this field. Yeah, we just need to pray. That's we right. can call things that are not as if they That's were. Right. And we just got to pray it down and start speaking to the winds and the airways, right. revival to be loosed. That's right. And I believe it's coming. We're doing the end of this month, by the way. The last three days of this month, we're having a youth revival here. So if you want to send your kids, but we are having a youth revival here. And Sean Patrick Williams, I have nothing to do with it. Sean Patrick Williams is putting it together. So I'm really in the dark about what he's doing. But we're praying that this will be the spark the Sparks Revival Fires all around, everywhere. Amen. And I'm believing for you all in Edgefield. Amen. That God will send great revival. That's the only thing that will change what's happening in America today. That's Amen. right. And um, I just wrote Netanyahu a letter because he is being pushed into a corner. And I just wrote him a letter that call out on God. That's right. He's our only hope. That's and right. that's what we do when we call out for revival. Amen. What would you say, Pastor? I would say that if uh, if you don't know the Lord uh, as Savior of your life, uh, I urge you today, the Bible says the day is the day of salvation. Uh, time's running out. I believe we are getting uh, living in the last days. And I urge you to oh. find you a good church, Bible-based church, but most of all, ask the Lord into your heart and uh, forgive you of your sins. Uh, if you're in the Edgefield area or if you're in the surrounding areas, we would love for you to come out and be a part of our church where God's moving, uh, God's blessing, and uh, just come see what God's doing. And that is light help. Lighthouse Fellowship. Lighthouse Fellowship. Would you like to look into the camera and just lead someone to the Lord? You know, if, if you don't know the Lord today, a lot of people make it out to be a uh, complicated thing. But it's just a matter of asking and believing uh, and confessing. If you don't know the Lord today, all you have to do is believe in your heart, ask Him, to forgive you of your sins and he'll come on the inside of you and begin to do a work. The Bible says if any man be in Christ Jesus, he's a new creature. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're tired of living the way you're living and, and things going the way they're going, then uh, pray together. Ask him, ask the Lord to forgive you of your sins and, and he'll come in. He said if any man, if any man will come to me, and uh, I'll know I was cast him out. So um, ask him to come into your life today. Make him Lord of your life. Amen. 
Well, there you have it. And it's just so simple. You just pray and say, Father, forgive me for I've sinned. Yes. And I choose to make you the Lord of my life. And I thank you for it. In Jesus' name I pray this. Amen. You know what? Amen. Simple that. It's just that simple. Talk to him. He's real. Yes. He wants to talk to you. He knows everything about you. So you might as well just say, you know what? I've just messed up. And he already knows that. Amen. But if you'll confess it and say, I just need you. That's what he wants to do. Go to your phones. We have phone partners here tonight ready to pray with you. Get up and go to your phones. We'd love to hear from you. Um, I'm going to bring Heather back up here, and we're going to be talking about um, some things to close out this program. But meanwhile, we have the band here. They're going to sing for you four in the morning. And they're going to get up and uh, sing for you. And aren't they? They have a different kind of sound, don't they? They're really good, and I know that you will enjoy them. We'll be back.
You've seen her for years as a TV personality, messenger of hope, a spiritual leader in our community. But where did she come from? What is her story? Now you can hear Dorothy Spaulding's testimony in Dorothy's own words. This is a story of loss, hardship, struggle, redemption, and ultimately grace. Become a monthly partner in our vision to spread the good news of Jesus Christ and receive the CD of Dorothy's very own testimony. As this audio CD blesses you and builds your faith, you will be helping to write the next chapter of our story. So call today and pledge your monthly support. 803-278-3618 or 888-725-8033. Be sure to request this exciting CD. All right. You know, Heather, we have just a few minutes, and I want to bring this up. For if you have need of patience after you have done the will of God, that ye may receive the promise. See, a lot of times we'll speak the word, mm -hmm. and, but we don't have patience to wait for it to come to pass. Right. We may say, um, in the name of Jesus, this, this, and this. And stand firm. And, and then we have no patience mm -hmm. to wait. Mm -hmm. And then with our own mouth, we kill the word of faith that we had spoken. Mm -hmm. Just, you know what I'm saying? I do know what you're saying. Or then we don't see it happening. Or, like you say, we kill what we just spoke, so we didn't have faith, so we went to another thing. Isn't that kind of being double-minded and wavering a little? Uh -huh. I mean, so you're going for one thing, then you don't wait, and you go over here, and you go. Now, there comes a point there, Dorothy. Let me ask you this. On faith. Let me hit this with what you just ahead. said about double-minded. Yes, yes. In James, it says, if you're double-minded, don't let that man think he will receive anything, anything from anything. the Lord. Anything. Anything. So one day I'm saying, oh, I got this and I got that. And the next day I'll say, oh, man, I feel so bad. Or I've just prayed with somebody. And they say, well, keep praying. No, I prayed the prayer of faith. Yes. I believe that I've I received. I've heard you say that, too. Go ahead. Um, I didn't mean to disrupt. No, no, no. Okay, so on faith, though, because I think this is important. How, or for me it is, maybe for someone else, too. If I'm standing for something, at what point do I know if God says, you know what, that's really not, if he's saying no. And, okay, God, maybe I am believing for something that's not. How, how do I know? I mean, I know we talk about praying in the will, so we pray the will of God. But what if God's got some great plan over here for me, and I'm looking at this one thing, and this is what I want, but he's going to try to move me over here. At what point do I say, okay, God, this is, I'm praying in this, but you must have something different. Okay, I would say, first of all, you've got to find the will of God in here. Mm -hmm. What is his will for your life? And if you don't know, you get quiet. And you just listen. Just listen. And just write down. I've got pages of notes where I just write down what I feel he says to me. Mm -hmm. One day, for example, he said, I said, why don't people hear you like I do? He says, because they don't listen. Don't listen. That's our biggest problem. We don't listen to what he says. Mm -hmm. And then if you'll listen quietly and write it down and say, okay, Lord, if this is you, I thank you. It comes to pass. That's right. I cast this care on you. If it's you, I thank you, it comes to pass. Now, I would never change my confession on it. I would just keep going. Be led by peace. That's right. Because if it isn't him, all of a sudden things won't quite work. <laughs> you know, let me tell you. Russell and I took a 100,000 square foot building in Portland, Oregon. I mean, we just wanted to do this street ministry. We had it all lined out with the television station and the street ministry. It looked great. It was a great idea. Now, when you say you took it, what do you mean? Where did you take it? What? You said you took it. Yeah, we took it by faith. By faith. Okay. By faith, we took it. The man gave us the keys to the building. <laughs> and so we made up a plan. We took it to the city, which was the wrong thing to do. And what we did, because we wanted the city to join with us, that's what we were doing. And they didn't want all those street people in their place. Yeah. Because there's already thousands of street people in Portland. And we were just trying to help them. Right. And so then when the city said to the man that owned the building, we'll take all your permits, we'll pull all your permits if you give that to them, if you let them use that. We will pull your permits. And I said, who is this unrighteous Philistine? <laughs> he stands in the way of the Lord. But I didn't have the will of the Lord. Yeah. Even though we prayed, we took it by faith, we had it. But there was an obstacle thrown in the way. Now, some obstacles are of God, others are not. 
but you'll be led by peace. That's right. So, so once you know the will of God, you stand on that, you stand on faith. Faith. Faith and don't waver. And don't waver. Don't waver. You've no matter what you see. Yeah, you've seen it in here how many times. We have to speak it and don't waver. Mm -hmm. And then if it's, you know, you may have to wait a while. Patience, that's patience. what you were reading, patience. And the Bible says, let patience have her perfect, perfect work. work. So then when it's done, you will be complete. I might be chopping entire, this up a little bit. Lacking nothing. Lacking nothing. Right. Complete, entire. That's what that patience is for. Patience is there to test us, to try us, to perfect us. Uh -huh. And yes. for his work. Yes. Well, let me tell you. Um, I prayed for a television station. Actually, I fasted for 40 days for a television station. And that was... Let's see, it was before we were walking the cross, so it was maybe a year before we walked the cross for eight years. Then he gave us the station. The dream never died. Mm -mm. It's just I had to put it on the shelf, and he had to take me through some things to make it happen. Well, that's what, so you could be prepared for prepared. what you had to face here and build your faith up. Well, I wish we had more time. We'll was talk quick. again. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Bye. Ba-do-na-da-ba-ba-da-ba-da-ba-do-na-da-ba-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-